About a week ago, I scooped up a jar of murky water, mud and weed from a local pond, sealed it up and put it on my windowsill as an experiment in making a sealed egosphere. Right from the start, there were signs of life in this jar, but let's see what happened over the first week or so. Before we start to look closely at my little sample of pond life, I want to tell you about a couple of other YouTube channels I love. One of them is called Life in Jars, where I got the inspiration to try this ecosphere experiment. The other one's called Journey into the Microcosmos, and it's best described as a relaxed, chilled out narrative of beautiful microscopy. I'm not affiliated with either of these channels, I just love them, and I think you might like them too. Links in the video description. Anyway, after the first night, the water had cleared quite a bit. Most of the duckweed had sorted itself out at the surface, and the only activity I could see in the water was the flatworms. There were several of them in there, a couple of them about 10 or 12 millimetres long, and a few smaller ones. The following day, the water had cleared a lot more, and I could see some small crustaceans swimming about. Initially, I only saw copepods, but later I started to see Daphnia too. On day three, I spotted a green speck of something inside the glass. I wanted to get a closer look at this, so I rigged up a cheap USB microscope using bits of the microscope stand, part of a faux pro mount, and a small camera clamp arm. And when we look at the green speck, it's not just a bit of anonymous algae, it's a hydra. These animals are related to sea anemones, and they're carnivorous. These slender tentacles are armed with stinging cells, that even on brushing contact with prey, fire out a barb that delivers neurotoxin and hooks the prey animal, preventing it from escaping. The tentacles then draw the prey into the mouth at the center. There are quite a few interesting things to know about these creatures. Firstly, they're green because they contain captive algae inside their bodies. The algae benefit from protection within the body of the hydra and are fed on its metabolic wastes. And in return, the hydra benefits from sugars and oxygen, which are the products of photosynthesis in the algae. Another interesting thing is that in addition to reproducing by breeding, they also do something called budding. New hydra grows branches on the main stalk. Initially these are fully joined and they even share the same digestive cavity. But after a while they break off and become separate individuals. They can move about by looping mouth over foot along a surface. Now in the back of some of these shots you'll have noticed the flatworms patrolling the inner surface of the jar. It was quite difficult to get good footage of these as they move relatively fast and so I just had to set the microscope and leave it recording until one of them happened to pass through the frame. Here's what that looks like. The flatworms are also predators as well as scavengers. They'll feed on living or dead crustaceans and other small organisms, including other flatworms. So what happens when the two predators in this jar meet, the hydra and the flatworm? Well, the flatworms should win on size, but the hydra can sting. So what actually seems to happen is a kind of a truce. They leave each other alone. As the days rolled on, the water became still clearer, but also the population of little swimming things has increased. Some of these are really easy to identify, copepods and daphnia, and some of the smaller specks look like juveniles of the same things. You can sort of guess this from the way they move, but there are also some little specks that seem to move in a sort of spiralling swimming motion. I think these may be single-celled organisms such as ciliates, possibly paramecium. It seems to me the hunting methods of the hydra are actually quite wasteful. I caught quite a few shots of them capturing and stinging a prey animal, only to later drop it without eating it. In fact, I didn't observe any cases where the hydra did actually ingest the prey. But nothing truly goes to waste here though. The dead prey animal sinks to the sediment in the bottom of the jar and will be picked up by the flatworms. This wriggling, swimming thing I haven't yet identified. It's about 10 or 15 millimetres long, very slender, and moves with a sort of stiff, wriggling motion. It won't stay still long enough for me to get a really good look, or a properly focused photo. It spends most of its time amongst the roots of the duckweed floating near the surface of the water. So this little jar, the pond on my windowsill, has been a great source of fascination and interest this past week during lockdown. 
and I'm really looking forward to seeing how things play out over the coming days and weeks. I don't know if this jar will achieve some kind of sustaining balance between plants and animals, predators and prey, or if one kind of organism will just take over and cause this little ecosphere to go into decline. I'll keep this going as long as I can though, so there will be further updates periodically or when something interesting happens. I hope that was interesting. If you're hungry for more content like this, but better than this, don't forget to check out the channels listed in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.